Hey, what's going on, YouTubers? All right, this is a hack case for the Nespy Pi case, or Nest Pi case, um, for the reset button for a soft boot, um, turn off and turn on. Uh, power button still works as normal, turns on and powers the whole unit, turns on the fan, and then the reset is the the actual boot up and the boot down um, while you're running it. So this is uh, there's several videos out there. Um, I think there's like four or five of them. There's only a handful. There's a lot of comments in different forums and each video has a ton of comments and I've gone through this all and I was trying to find out an easier way of doing this and uh, a successful way, an easy way. Apparently they're all successful. I've tried every single one of them and really the reason why it didn't work except for the last one was because um, I wasn't using a, a resistor. And I don't want to use any resistors because the, the board should work itself the way it is. Um, kind of figured it out and and went from there so <clears throat> without further ado I'll put all the credits to the different videos that I've seen and I'll put that in, in on the bottom in the description as far as any links as well you um, as far as soldering there's a little bit of soldering you have to do and there's also a script that you have to get and it's actually on a website and I'll put that on link below um, they updated the script so it should work from the newest version this is the newest version up to the old versions all right so this should work for everybody for the most part um, from what I'm aware of so here we go so this is already taken apart if you need to know how to take this apart uh, it's only several screws really here here are all the screws I took off to make this the way it is right now uh, basically this is set right here in the bottom this actually with the USB and the Ethernet it sits right on top it's just two screws holding each board down that's all it is there's no other screws on there so you can't mess that up just put them to the side I know which ones they are already because I've already opened it like 50 times um, so this is the only thing you'll be working with right up front which is the power board um, basically the power comes in through the rear goes underneath it doesn't touch the pie at all it goes underneath and goes straight to this board so uh, these two that are here on the on the back this, this one right here is the main power source it comes to this board right here it runs across like a U underneath the reset button underneath the power button and comes back around and makes a big loop and goes out this and that's when it goes out to the Nespy and comes out to this board here which is the fan board alright so and the US and the small USB port in the front powering those up so basically what you do on this side the only thing you have to do on this side if you can see all I did was eliminate the reset button. This is the reset button. Basically, power is going through it and it's going to the power button and coming back across. The, the reset button is like the power button and essentially. So when you hit the reset button, the way when you normally buy it, it shuts the system down and turns it on. Or actually just shuts it down. And it's a hard boot. So um, it's not a soft boot. So basically to eliminate this, all you're doing, and you don't have to do this on this side. I just seen another video where a guy did it this way. And and I, I'm a, I apologize for not knowing his name right now, but I'll put that in the in the link below too. Um, you can do it from the back, but I just did it this way because it's the way it was done. You still have to scribe. If you look right next to the the switch itself, let me see if I can get this to zoom. If you look next to the switch itself, these power. They're running through these little ribbons. I, I scored this with a knife, with a hobby knife, and you have to do it on both sides. And if you plan to do this mod, just be prepared that um, you have to score these in order to eliminate this from the power. So I don't know if you can see this any well. There's uh, other videos with pictures and all that, but basically you're eliminating it. I don't know if you can tell. There it is, right there. And you can see the drag marks from the knife right here, right there. So I did that for top and bottom, top and bottom on both sides of, and you're only doing this to the reset button. So basically these jumper cables, you need to put these in place. You scribe off a little of the green to expose the brass underneath very lightly with the same hobby knife. And you need to run jumper cables from line to line. Uh, they run in parallel pretty much. They only make the U underneath the power button. So you see these right here, they're running in parallel, and uh, I scribed enough to solder on it. There's a guy saying that he needs special flux or something, and I didn't need any flux. The only thing I used was, um, I scored it, I cleaned it up, and 
all I had it was this high-tech electrical resin core solder and that's all I used so whether that has a cleaning agent or not um, I just pretty much cleaned this the best I could uh, aired it out and that's all I had to do everything's on there snug as you can see it's on there tight so um, you jump these cables from parallel so this one goes to this one to that one up here and then the bottom one the two bottom ones together once you do these jumper cables you flip this over to the other end and this is where all the magic happens and it's very simple there's no diode there's no capacitors there's no these little kits that you this is free all you need is solder and extra wire and that's all I did so basically when you come to the Raspberry Pi which this is um, if you can see all the Raspberry Pis have a uh, right here it tells you Raspberry Pi 3 model B v version 1.2 uh, so that's what my version is this should be the latest version from what I understand so on these pin connectors when you buy this this box this will this will be here already um, you're going into the fifth the fifth port which to make it easier everybody's talking about number five it's the third one in from the one that's not being used so it's going to be this one and you don't see a cable there because I actually hardwired it in from the bottom right to the pin at the bottom there's solder there and I just wired it there because I don't want to mess around with having a short or anything so I just a lot of people poke the wire through here and that works for them if you have the clips that go in there the pins you can actually put that in there and that's fine um, these two right here, if you need to know, these are 5 volt. These are two 5 volt sources right here, first and second. And then this one right here is just the ground. So these two right here are the only two you're concerned of at this point, which is number 5 and number 6. Basically, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's how it goes. So you're concerned with number five and number six. Um, you just gotta break the loop there from the switch. So, with that said, you don't have to bridge anything. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is take two pieces of uh, of wire with the buttons facing towards you. There's six of them right here. Six like this one right here. That's the power button. Here's the reset button. So in the middle one, furthest one to the right. You're going to make a jumper to go to the negative, which is this one right here, just straight across basically. All right, you can use, this is too long, I was using, I was doing all kinds of soldering all the different ways and just didn't work. All right, this is the way it worked. And it's very simple, very easy, so again, it's a little soldering. Then the bottom left one is the one that's going to port five. All right, the ground is actually the ground coming from here. So. These are all grounded in the same spot in a sense, but basically you're you're breaking the the connection and you're just sending the signal to, to port five. That's all you're doing. So by doing this, and that's it, that's all you have to do when you put it back together, you push the reset button while it's on on your emulator screen or whatever screen it is that it's on, after playing a video game, you hit the reset button and it'll do a soft boot. It'll actually turn the system off. And you always want to make sure. You can actually see the green light. Um, if you give it 10 seconds after you hit the button, it'll be completely off. If you do it with the case open, you can see the little, there's two uh, lights right here. There's a red one and there's a green one. When it's on, it's green. The red one is just as it's powering on. Um, the green one's the one you're concerned. That's the actual CPU working. So when that physically turns off, then you're safe to power down completely. Um, a lot of people just leave this button on and that's fine because it'll just leave this LED on. And this will turn it on and off, soft on, soft off, and that's it. And that, that's that's the whole hack itself. There's no dials. There's nothing in between that you need to worry about. Um, it's completely safe. I've already used it. Um, I just have it all torn apart because it's easier. If not, this video would have been longer trying to tear all this apart. Um, if you don't feel like so you do have to solder for this, so regardless, um, you have to have a little bit of skill to solder, but not that much. Um, you can actually poke the wire through there. I don't like that. I like the solid. I like to have it all soldered in. So I just did it from the bottom of the board so I don't have to worry about the pins, you know, pulling the clip or nothing out. The 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 little harness. So leave comments, anything you need um, as far as help. Uh, this took me a while to figure this out, um, especially this way. And, and there's one gentleman, um, 
he actually left a comment and I read it and the comment made more sense than the actual videos that I've seen out there um, the videos that I've seen out there there were of them taking taking their part and doing it and that's fine but this right here is the way that works for me and remember you got to download that script I'll leave that in the link below um, that script will help you a ton uh, once you load it up you have to load it exactly um, there's another gentleman out there um, that he has a ton of videos on Raspberry Pis and he has the full link I got the link from him and again I'll give everybody a credit on the, on the link below I just don't have anybody's names right now offhand I just finished this too and I wanted to um, after testing and everything I wanted to show a video because I went crazy looking for a way of doing it without having to use resistors and stuff so that's it just to eliminate the reset button make sure your jumpers are there so your power button will work that's all that's there for you turn it around and just keep it simple you're just making the connection that's all you're doing so um, this button where everybody assumed that it was normally open or normally closed like nobody could have gave you a, a complete definition of what this button was doing from what I seen I couldn't find any wire diring rands completely and this is the way that it works flawlessly and um, even downloading the script alright well you guys take care thanks